Oh yeah. The water's on. Let's go! Yeah, so the other day, uh, first of all, I've, I've been stuck, David's been stuck, we've all been stuck. And the other day we're here and the siding boys got stuck over by the swamp there. <laughs> and all we had here was my minivan. But I'll tell you that, old girl's pretty strong and it managed to pull them out. And then I went and got my groceries for my wife in the minivan. You gotta remember to go slow though. Check out this beautiful timber frame that we got from the school where people learn how to make timber frames like this at an exceptional value and we put up in two days. I'm very proud of it. It's gonna get the same steel roof as we're doing. We just have to strap these rafters with two by fours, put our steel roofing on it. Then we're gonna screen the thing in and then you've got a little room where you can be outside if the bugs are bad or for whatever reason, just a nice little porch. Oh man, so the water line worked. We did the geothermal line, shoving the wire up the line, and it works in minus 40. It saves like $2,000 for a heated line. But I'll tell you, putting it in the lake, we shoveled off the lake, cut a line in through it, and we cut it about 50 feet out, got completely soaked. And then priming this pump was like one of the trickiest things ever. But we've got it all set up now. We've got the pump, we've got our hot water tank set up. Basically our, our utility room is done. We're just gonna insulate it so that you don't hear the pump when it turns on. And we're pretty much good to go. When we first started planning this job, we found some excellent doors at a fantastic value. And we figured for what doors we were missing, like closets, we'd put in some bifold louver doors or whatnot. But after we saw the doors up, we said, they look really nice. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just match all the doors? So we ended up making nine more doors to finish off the design. And that involved uh, using sheets of MDF for the main board, and then just putting some simple ripped plywood along the edge and puttying it, sanding it. And now we've got all matching doors throughout the home at an excellent value. Guys, what do you think about these real cottage ceilings? Uh, these are the same boards we used in all the other rooms and we stained them white. This time we flipped them over, did the nice smooth side and stained it with an early American stain. We put tar paper on the back of the board in strips before putting it up so that when you look in between the boards, you see black. I think the look is really nice and it was quite affordable. It was a buck a square foot for the material. So 900 square feet, 200 bucks in stain, let's say, and then a thousand dollars to have it put up. So overall $2,200 as opposed to $1,800 for the drywall version. And this really makes me feel like I'm in an elegant Muskoka cottage. How about you? Would you like to come to the cottage? Would you like to come to my wooden ceiling cottage? Okay, this is weird. Fireplaces in ultra-efficient homes are a tricky situation. A lot of passive homes don't have a fireplace because it involves typically cutting a big hole for the exhaust vent into the building envelope. Where you cut the hole for the chimney means that one way or another, no matter how you shake it, there's always gonna be warm air exiting the building, cold air entering, whatever situation you don't want, it's happening. So our solution to this is using a bioethanol burner. This uses plant-based alcohol, which it more or less resembles what's in like a chafing dish at the buffet. Uh, so it burns clean, it doesn't need an exhaust. It also doesn't give off a lot of heat, which is excellent for a high efficiency home. A typical fireplace would do about four to eight times as much heat as this whole entire cottage would need, meaning that you'd be in your pajamas, sweating with the windows open, even in February. So this way we get a real flame inside what looks like a real old fashioned Muskoka fireplace. And we did it at an exceptional value because I got the stone at a garage sale. And this beam is a miscut from when I did David's timber frame porch. 
All right, so this is our fireplace chimney breast. It uh, looks like a chimney goes up there and we did it out of a cottage favorite, which is known as V-joint pine. You get this profile on one side, this on the other. I think this scale is, is nicer for this. We've stained it with our whitewash, which is just watered down white paint. Uh, it's only got one coat on it now, but you can see the knots showing through. So you still get the feel of the wood. However, it's nice and light. It doesn't darken or yellow like that honey stuff from the 80s does. You go in a house and you're like, wow, everything is very orange. And then this feature is something that, you know, we've gone a little bit over budget with this build so far, but I managed to find an amazing stereo. It's got 5.1 surround sound, has all HDMI inputs, and, and what this unit basically means is we're gonna have two speakers at the front, two speakers behind you, a speaker in the center, and a subwoofer. So if you're watching like an action movie and you hear a helicopter coming, it's gonna like sound like it's circling behind your head and around and they'll have like some of that bass, which is important. And it's just a nice way to add some value. We put all the wires in. If anyone wants to put like a thousand watt system in, they can do that. But for now, you know, we can listen to our favorite songs and I've made sure that it's plenty loud, you know? Check this out. Yeah, I mean, it really, it really pounds, you know? All right. Who feel the sunshine even though I don't know what this is, but... We do. I love the sun. You know, it's really nice. It's very nice, so it's good to have that. Oh, it shines on my backyard. I better get back to work. Oh, man. You should have seen this, uh... should have seen this a little while ago. All, making all that trim, like 4,000 foot of boards. This was nothing. In new houses that are airtight, and this house being especially airtight, we have a problem. We need to change oxygen, otherwise we're, we're gonna start feeling lightheaded and stuff. There's a number of reasons that we need to exchange air in the house, but this is the unit for the job. Basically, this unit has a core which has a bunch of tiny little fins in which the warm air that is exiting the building runs through. And it runs right past the cold air coming in. And basically we're taking the energy from the warmth of the air that's leaving the building, trying to transfer that energy into the air coming into the building, putting it through a small heater to pick up the difference that we've lost, and then blowing fresh air into each bedroom. After we push the fresh air into each bedroom, we're also drawing it through the bathroom. So we're drawing air from anywhere that has humidity in it like bathrooms, kitchen, laundry room. That's gonna do a few jobs. It's gonna change the air so that you and I can breathe. It's going to relieve condensation and moisture within the home, which is a major problem. Uh, to the point that I really can show you if we go by the door there, we're now down to about 66% humidity. Uh, it's recommended that you be below 50% for a home to not do any damage to it or anything. Uh, we're, we started out at about 85% humidity. Water was just running down the windows because we're painting in here, we're using more uh, the walls had moisture in them. As soon as we put those windows in, it was like, holy moisture. So major thing to deal with in super efficient homes. And having a unit like this that's over 80% efficient is way beyond what the building code demands, but it's necessary to reach passive housing standards. So this is the condensation that's coming off all the doors and windows. It's like, it's like a puddle here and you can see it like coming, dripping off of everything. Uh, it's gone down a lot and it's soon to be gone as soon as we get that ERV going. So what we have in the kitchen is we are trying to do both. We're trying to do efficiency and look. So we've got this typical unit. It's got the lights, it's got the fan, but this is gonna be mostly non-functional. It's gonna run through a bit of a filter when you turn the fan on. But the real fan is the ERV and we've got our switch over there. And when you look up there, that vent is gonna be what's doing all of the pulling and exchanging the warm air that's coming out of the kitchen with fresh air that's being blown in into the main room. All right, now this is the master bathroom shower we're standing in right here. The shower pan I bought before the build at a great value, and I also had a shower door. We kind of realized it was a bit small of a scale for this big of a room. So we said, let's build a bench. So we built a bench off to the side of it. We've waterproofed it all. So this is gonna be pretty nice when you're 
having a shower, get to chill out, do some stretches, whatever you do, you know? So we've got the shower door that goes here. I already had that purchased. I have a big piece of glass that happens to fit here perfectly. So all we need to complete this is the tile, one piece of glass for here, and then we're gonna finish the seat with the same material, handstone. We're using it for all the vanity tops, the kitchen island, and we're gonna finish it off with some nice Moen shower hardware. So I had a meeting with Samantha Pin the other night. She came up and visited and, and saw everything. And she was saying what she'd like to see is a rustic open concept vanity. So we built this thing out of some beams that I got at a really reasonable price. Filled in the shelf with some of the board that we've been using for the ceilings and the trim. And what we'll do to finish this is put a beautiful handstone solid surface countertop with undermount sinks and beautiful Moen faucets to really put the icing on the cake. I think you're gonna like the finished look here. Right now, I'm standing where the tub will be going in the master bathroom. And I gotta say, this is probably my favorite window in the whole house. And it's actually three windows. But now that we've tied it together with the trim and the woodwork, it kind of looks like it's one big window. I love the way all of the walls are slightly thicker in this house. So you get a real nice windowsill. So you can put things on it, or you could almost grow a vegetable garden in here. How do you like them tomatoes? didn't want to poke holes in and out of the ceiling. I spent a lot of time putting plywood up on the ceiling, sealing all the joints. We want to make this like a thermos and by poking holes for electrical in and out of the ceiling, that would destroy that. So we ran everything surface mounted on that plywood and then built false beams out of pine boards to encompass the wiring and the box for any light fixtures. So we've utilized those in the living room, in the hallway, and it's also been an area that we can hide plumbing lines, heating pipes for the ERV. Basically all our sins are disguised in fake beams. Finally, the kitchen is wrapped up. We've got our beautiful Ikea cabinets are in. We hollowed out behind the fridge, so we've got a full depth fridge at counter depth. Richelieu hardware. And what do you think of the counters? How do you like that handstone? This is a great product because if you use marble in your home, it scratches, it stains. This gives you all the benefits of marble with the durability of pretty much the best counters that are made by man. Sam came in the other day and she said, you know what, it'd look great, a backsplash. So we tiled this entire wall with subway tile and we wrapped our vent by putting this nice piece of pine on the edge of it. And that wall, we just ended up using floating shelves on the drywall. Look at this beautiful clear window, the sun shining, the grass is starting to sprout. And our condensation problem is completely gone. Our ERV completely takes care of that by exchanging outdoor air with indoor air and managing the humidity. We decided to go with the floating dock system. This dock has floats that can stay in the water all year round. They're basically made of culverts. You know the things that you drive over when you go through the country that allow water to go underneath it? They're plastic culverts with the ends cap. The nice thing about them is it, it keeps all the wood out of the water so that the wood doesn't saturate with water and then freeze in the winter and rot. Having the wood either in the water or out of the water is always better out of the water is best. I'll tell you, this winter and spring has been a tough one. It's just been water, 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 water everywhere. Frozen water, water that's muddy. Yeah, I came down here to smooth out the, the landscaping and the machine just went and Luckily it drove out. You never want to rent the machine with wheels. You always want the one with tracks, just footnote. So I'm Mark Beadle, I own a company called Dock Crafters and we build custom floating docks. Colin ordered some for this project. So we've got a shore ramp and two 16 by 8 floating ramps heading out to 12 by 16 floater at the end. The project went together pretty well. It was a little dicey trying to get the uh, dock across from the boat launch, but uh, the one time the wind came up was when we were trying to bring it across. The nice thing with these is that it can stay in the water all winter, so when the ice comes, you don't have to worry about it, just leave it and uh, enjoy it for years to come.
Guys, the bathroom is finally done. We're seeing all of our homemade trim and homemade vanity come together. Our homemade sliding mirrors. You can either watch yourself brush your teeth and do your hair, or you can pop it open. And check out that little raccoon out there. Getting into my trash? Get out of there, you rascal. The cool thing about this bathroom is anywhere you stand, you've got a view of the lake. When you have the mirrors, you can be lying in bed looking at your wife in the tub. We'll give her a little wave. There she is. And it almost looks like it's a window everywhere it is because there's so much glass in here. This is to allow the southern light in to heat up our concrete floor and fill our bedroom with light. We've done a couple things since we checked in last. We added this paneling detail to the wall. We've got our surrounds in for the tub, all of our handstone counter uh, material. We used it for the vanity and then made a wrap around the entire shower in the bathtub. We use the same boards that we use for the ceiling to create a surround for the entire toilet room and shower area. I hope you love it. That wraps up the bathroom and on to the next one. Welcome to the master bedroom. Seems like only yesterday this place was just an old bunch of wall panels and some concrete floor getting ground down. My friend Samantha really put the icing on the cake in here. And with the barn board ceilings, the beams, the view, and that bathroom. I think this is gonna make someone's dream come true. We built this house for around $200 a square foot, which rivals the price of any modern house today. This house has more features that will keep your family healthy, safe, and also keep you from paying bills to energy companies, you know, roofing companies and every sort of company. You don't need to replace a deck here. This is how people should build houses, and I'm super happy to be a part of this with David and Samantha Penn. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah, she's, she's been good. I really appreciate you involving me in this wonderful project. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's finally, I think it's all sort of coming together at once. The dock, the sunshine, the cottage is performing as we were hoping it would. You Absolutely. Know? I think the lots turned out a lot better than we expected as well. When I think of going to a cottage, I think of, you know, seeing your neighbor, hearing them. This is complete privacy. 